Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to use the foreground select tool and this is using GIMP 2.10.6. At the time of this tutorial this is the latest version of GIMP and this tool essentially makes it super easy to distinguish foreground objects from background objects in your image using a very limited number of steps. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com as always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate. You can watch one of our GIMP playlists, support us on Patreon, and of course see our Poll of the Week results, so definitely check those items out. And you can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing from beginner to pro photo retoucher course. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for today's tutorial, I'm going to be using a free image from Pixabay right here, and then another image I took of my dog here. And I'm just going to show you a couple examples of how this tool works. So for starters, you can come over here to your toolbox and here you'll see the foreground select tool. And so all the tool options for the foreground select tool will show up down here in the tool options section. And as always with all of these select tools, you've got four different modes here. You've got replace the current selection, add to the current selection, subtract from the current selection, and intersect with the current selection. We're going to stick with add to the current selection. Then you've got an option here to feather the edges. And this is going to determine whether or not the edges of this foreground select tool are going to have a hard edge or are going to have a softer edge that sort of fades from one uh, part, which is the foreground to the background. I actually recommend keeping the feathered edges option checked because this tool isn't perfect and sometimes it does leave kind of jagged rough edges around your foreground object. The radius of the feathered edges is going to depend on how large your image is. This image is decently large so we can keep it around 10. If you're using a smaller image you can decrease this to something around like 5 or even something lower than 5. But I'll just stick with 10. And for the most part these other items are going to come into play when we actually start drawing with this tool. But you'll see down here there's something called engine. And this is just going to determine the basically the sampling method that's going to be used for the actual matting. Matting being the technical term for separating a background object from a foreground object. So that's just called image matting. And these are both different types of algorithms that were developed by different groups. So this group here, the matting Levin group, was led by somebody named Levin. That's where the name comes from. And then this group here just decided to name their method the global matting sampling method. So that's why this is called matting global. And both of these use different methods. So the matting global option uses iterations. So that's really just, as far as I know, how many times the algorithm is run in order to separate the background object from the foreground. And then with matting 11, you've got levels and active levels. And that also just allows you to make adjustments to the way the algorithm is basically being applied to separate the two objects, the background object and the foreground object. So I'm going to stick with matting 11 as my engine. And you'll see that my mouse pointer looks like the same mouse pointer as the lasso tool. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on my lasso tool, you can see that has the same exact mouse pointer. So I'll come back here to my foreground select tool. And the reason for this, you could actually see it down here. It says roughly outline the object to extract. And the lasso tool is a way to sort of freehand outline anything in GIMP. And so basically what this tool wants you to do is use the lasso tool first to roughly outline what your foreground object is. So in this case, we're going to just roughly outline the girl here. And we shouldn't have to precisely outline her because that would sort of defeat the purpose of the tool. And the purpose of this tool, if I haven't said it already, is to basically separate the foreground object from the background object with minimal human input. And so you just want to make sure you connect these two items at the end or make sure you connect basically your points at the end so you have a closed loop here. If you don't, it'll still work, but just try to connect the uh, loop here. And then hit the Enter key. And so what that does now is it roughly distinguishes your background from your foreground. So out here in the blue area, you can see your background. And then in this area, which is sort of just a blue tinted area, is your foreground. And this is obviously a very jagged, very rough outline right now. But now you'll see your mouse pointer has also switched over to the paintbrush tool. And what this is going to allow you to do is paint and it's going to show up as your foreground color first, but then it's going to show up as clear once you release your mouse pointer. But you're basically painting what your foreground object is and you can adjust the stroke width over here if you want your stroke to be larger or you could keep it sort of smaller, which is what I recommend. So I'll keep it at 26 for now and I'm just going to roughly tell this algorithm that this is my foreground object. And I'm just going to start with the larger parts of my foreground. So 
the more, you know, the main parts of the uh, image here, or of my model, I should say. So her body and her hair, the larger parts of her hair. And then you'll see that when I release, instead of being my foreground color, which was this sort of brownish color, now it's this clear color. But I haven't really gotten any of the fibers of her hair or anything, so what I'm going to do is just turn down my stroke width. And now with a thinner brush, I'm just going to sort of mark off her hair. And I can use a smaller brush if I wanted to, and that would probably create a more accurate result. But just for this tutorial, I'm going to roughly do this. And just make sure we get some of these parts right here a little bit better. And then I'll release my mouse. If you screw up at any point, you can uh, change this to the draw background mode. Let's say you select too much of the background like that. I can switch over to draw background and then just paint on that. And that'll switch that over to my background. I don't recommend doing that too often because it does kind of screw up the algorithm when you do that. So I'll switch back over to draw foreground and make sure this part of the hair here is uh, painted out. And once you're ready, go ahead and hit the enter key and the algorithm is going to work to distinguish the foreground object from the background object. So you can see here these parts here got missed so what I can do is switch to draw background and just select these parts as my background and now it'll live update that algorithm and you'll see it kind of improved that right there and this is why I don't recommend you know on that in that case I purposely selected too much of the foreground and it kind of screwed up that part right there but now it's all fixed. And you can do that sort of throughout the image if you want, if you want a more accurate sort of uh, distinguishment between the foreground and background object. And once you're happy with this, you can see down here it says select foreground and then press escape to exit the preview or enter to apply. So if I didn't want to keep this and I wanted to start over, I can hit the exit key. Otherwise, just hit enter. And now we've got our foreground object selected here. And there's a couple of things I can do once I have my foreground object selected. I can erase the background or I can change the background to a different color, or I can erase the foreground object, uh, or really just do a variety of things here. I can only make image adjustments to this foreground object. But let me come over here, right click on this main image layer, and make sure I have an alpha channel added on here. If this is not grayed out like it is right here, make sure you click on that to add transparency to your image. And then I'll hit Control I, and that allows me to select my background instead of the foreground. And then if I hit the delete key, you'll see that my background is now deleted and I'll hit control shift A to deselect everything. And now you can see this algorithm did a pretty good job of selecting our foreground object from the background. And I'll hit control Z to back up a little bit and I'll show you another example of what I can do. So I'll come over here to colors and then saturation and I can turn the saturation down of just my background and that allows the foreground object to stand out a little bit better. So I'll click OK. So now we have a black and white background and a color foreground object. And I'll hit Control Z to undo that. And the last thing I could do is I can create a new layer and I'll just name this overlay and click OK. And I can grab the gradient tool here and just select a random uh, pre-selected gradient here. So I just went with this abstract one gradient. And then I can click and drag this gradient. And that'll draw a gradient only on the background part of my image. And I'll hit Enter. And then I could change the layer mode of this so I can come up here and let's say I put this to soft light and now it just looks like we have a sort of rainbow color going on in the background and it doesn't affect the foreground object which is the girl in the foreground here. So go to control shift A to deselect everything. So there's our first example and that was using the matting leaven option. All right, so for my next example, I'm gonna come over here to the photo of the dog and I'm going to grab the foreground select tool again and you'll see that the lasso tool is my mouse pointer once again. And so we're just going to loosely trace the dog as the foreground object. And connect that for a closed loop and hit the enter key. And I can change my preview color here. So right now it's set to blue, but I can have this to green or red. And I'll just stick with red for now. You can also do gray. And now you'll see my mouse pointer has changed to my brush tool again. So I'll use this to tell the algorithm what my foreground object is. And we don't have to be exact, but the better job we do, the better the final product will look. And I can also come over here and increase the stroke width. This way I can cover a little bit more ground a little bit more quickly. And now I'll hit the enter key. And that will separate my foreground object from my background. And something I can do that I didn't show you in the last example is I can change the engine that we're using. So right now it's set to matting 11. I can change this to matting global and you guys can see the difference. 
So this algorithm obviously has not worked nearly as well. I'll uh, turn the iterations down. I'm not sure why it missed this giant chunk right here, but it certainly did not do as good of a job. I can use my paintbrush here to try to paint this out. And there must have been some sort of glitch here, but I'll just switch it back over to matting 11. And now you can see that this algorithm has done a little bit of a better job. And I can also increase the number of levels here, which is going to increase the number of down sampled levels to use. That's just going to sort of adjust your algorithm if maybe you didn't get quite the result you wanted. Same with the active levels, you can adjust those. I'm going to keep these where they're at though, just uh, for this example because I like the way it looks right now. And once you're ready, make sure you're clicked on the actual image. And then just hit the enter key and that will select your foreground object. In this case, we do have the feathered edges, so it's going to sort of uh, miss some of this stuff up here, and uh, that's all right. And I'll just hit Control-I to once again select the invert of this. And I want to add a transparency to this image, so I'll right-click on here and go to Add Alpha Channel. And now when I hit the Delete key, you'll see that everything is deleted. And again, because we have the feathered edges here, it didn't delete a lot of this stuff right here, but that's all right, just for this example. And I'll hit Control-Z. I can also do to this image what I did with the last one, so I can go to Colors, Saturation, and I can only adjust the saturation of the background there, and that helps our foreground object stand out just by desaturating that background. Or I could do something like Add a Layer Mask based on this selection, so I could right-click, go to Add Layer Mask, and under Initialize Layer Mask 2, make sure Selection is checked, and click Add. In this case, it's gonna mask out the dog because remember, we did invert that selection. If I hit Control-Z and then Control-I to invert that selection back to where it originally was, I can right-click, add layer mask, make sure selection is checked again, and that'll mask out the background. I'll hit Control-Z and then Control-Shift-A to select none. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com and you can enroll in our GIMP best-selling photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.